فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد we are in the explanation of the book منهج الحق written by الشيخ عبد الرحمن ابن ناصر السعدي رحمه الله we uh, stopped at the 29th line and that's what we're going to carry on from سم الم ترى هذا الليل اذ جاء مظلما الم ترى هذا الليل اذ جاء مظلما فعاقبه جيس من من الصبح يطرد Have you not seen the night as it approaches with spreading darkness then the army of dawn follows it and drives it away The author rahimahullah he says Alam tara, do you not see, O oh believer? He's talking to the believer here. Do you not see, هذا الليل إذ جاء مظلما, when the night had come, with its darkness, it's spreading inside the day, meaning it's taking over the day. فأعقبه جيش من الصبح يطرده. So the darkness was there. And then the day comes and he overtakes the night. Do you not see that happening? So what the Sheikh is trying to say here is this is a sign. من الآيات الله الباهرة It is from the signs of Allah that are very enormous and great. <coughs> and it indicates Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's strength and ability. How he is the true innovator. that deserves and has the right to be remembered and to be shown gratitude subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah mentions in the many, in many places in the Quran the matters pertaining to day and night Allah says in the Quran wa huwa alladhi ja'ala al-layla wa an-nahara khilfatan liman arada an yadhakkara aw arada shukura the one who wants to remember Allah and wants to show gratitude to Allah Allah mentions the day and the night the occurring of the day getting rid of the night and the night occurring getting rid of the day allah says all of that is for what liman arada an yadhakkara aw arada shukura all of that is for the one who wants to remember allah and it's for the one who wants to show gratitude also allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says yukawwiru al-layla 'ala an-nahari wa yukawwiru an-nahara 'ala al-layl wa sakhkhara ash-shamsa wal qamar كل يجري لأجل مسمنا ألا له ألا هو العزيز الغفار. الله says to us here, Allah he places on the the night the day and the day the night and Allah has made for us the sun and the moon. All of them are working in their courses by Allah تبارك وتعالى's will and Allah تبارك وتعالى's إرادة. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says فَالِقُ الْإِصْبَاحِ وَجَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ سَكَنًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ حُسْبَانًا ذَلِكَ تَقْدِيرُ الْعَزِيزِ الْعَلِيمِ In another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says وَآيَةٌ لَهُمُ اللَّيْلُ نَسْلَخُ مِنْهُ النَّهَارَ فَإِذَا هُمْ مُظْلِمُونَ وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي لِمُسْتَقَرٍ لَهَا ذَلِكَ تَقْدِيرُ الْعَزِيزِ الْعَلِيمِ Abdul Rahman Nasir Sa'di rahimahullah in his tafsir He says that وفي هذه الآيات in these signs the day, night, sun, moon these signs there is a تنبيه إلى أن العبد ينبغي له أن يتدبر it is in it for the slave to ponder <coughs> on what نعم الله عليه the blessings Allah has bestowed upon him ويستبصر فيها and he sees it and he realizes it وَيَقِيسُهَا بِحَالِ عَدَمِهَا And he tries to then think of its absence. If these things were to go and they would never exist. 
Because if you compare, he says, فَإِنَّهُ إِذَا وَازَنَ بَيْنَ حَالَةِ وُجُودِهَا وَبَيْنَ حَالَةِ عَدَمِهَا تَنَبَّهَ عَقْلُهُ لِمَوْضِعِ الْمِنَّةِ Because if the person compares between the, the fact that he has it now and the fact that it's present now, and if it wasn't there and it was absent, how things would be. He says this would be an, a, a chance for him to realize and to understand the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him. Then the author went on to say in, Naam. Ta'ammal bi arja'i samai jami'iha jami'iha Naam. كواكبها وقادة تتردد Contemplate the vast expanses of the heavens, their illuminating shining stars moving about. So the author says, تأمل, observe. Look, بأرجاء السماء. The word أرجاء, it means the corners and the sides and the edges. It's أطرافها وجوانبها. Jami'iha, all of it. Look at it. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spread this sama. And he made the sama a roof over the earth. Covering every single creation. And encompassing it. Kawakibuha, it's stars. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in the sky. Allah made it subhanahu wa ta'ala for three reasons as we mentioned in our previous set, in our previous lecture, which is Zinat al Sama, beauty for the sky. Also Allah makes it made it for وَعَلَمَاتٍ يُهْتَدَى بِهَا Signs that the person can become guided through it. In other words, the, suns, the stars are used to know the directions to go to. But the author mentioned here um, and also the third one, which is Rujuma lil Shayateen, shooting stars to destroy the Shayateen. The author says, Waqada tun tataradadu. The word Waqad Waqada, the word Waqada, it means Mudi'a, it lights, illuminates. The stars is a sign from the signs of Allah. If it wasn't for the stars, then the sky would not have had this beauty that we see in it. And this amazing appearance that the Sama' has, without the stars, it wouldn't have had it. And that's what brings an individual to really ponder and to observe, subhanAllah, and look at its meanings. And to use that as an evidence that Allah Ta'ala's complete power and strength and that Allah wa ta'ala is great and enormous and strong in his creating. وَقَادَةٌ تَتَرَدَّدُ The word تَتَرَدَّدُ it means a تَتَحَرَّكُ It moves. The stars they move with, with Allah wa ta'ala's permission from place to place. All of, the, all of that is happening because Allah wa ta'ala gave it the permission and he is the one who sanctioned for it to do, to do so. أليس لهذا محدث متصرف حكيم عليم واحد متفرد Do these not have an originator who controls them all wise, all knowing, one and unique The author then says أليس لهذا محدث Does this creation that we spoke about the stars, the sama the earth, all of them. أَلَيْسَ لِهَذَا مُحْدِثٌ Do they not all have a creator who started it? The author is trying to say, أَلَيْسَ لَهُ مُبْدِعٌ خَالِقٌ Is there one who did not, is there, does he not have one who started it? Does he not have one who created it? Is it right to rationally really say that this earth, this universe, it came to be the way it is felt at it, out of coincidence. Or sudfa bila khaliqin wala mawjud. 
It just happened without any creator and one who brought it into existence. So the author is asking a question. This istifham here is istifham which is inkari. أَلَيْسَ لِهَذَا مُحْدِثٌ Then he says مُتَصَرِّفٌ مُتَصَرِّف here is مُدَبِّرُ لَهُ He's trying to refute two parties of people. The one who says that the universe, it came into existence without any creator. Atheists. And he's also refuting the deists who say Allah did create this universe or God did bring this universe into existence but he no longer does have any control over it. So the author is saying أَلَيْسَ لِهَذَا مُحْدِثٌ مُتَصَرِّفٌ مُدَبِّرُ لَهُ One who controls it. Because nothing moves in this universe. Nothing takes place in this universe. Unless Allah tabarak wa ta'ala permits for it. Unless Allah sanctions for it. And then the author says Hakimun. Allah did not create this creation except through a wisdom in which he did it for. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. وَمَا خَلَقَ السَّمَاءَ Allah did not create the sama. وَالْأَرْضَ Allah did not create the ard. وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا بَاطِلًا And between it, batilan, falsehood, without no purpose, no aim. ذَلِكُمْ أَمَا ذَلِكَ That is... Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala ذَلِكَ That is ظَنُّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا The speculation and the assumption of the disbelievers فَوَيْلُ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنَ النَّارِ Wail be to the disbelievers for them the hellfire. So what we take from this verse is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He did not create the samawat and the ard without any purpose or wisdom behind it. Rather, he created it with a wisdom behind it. ولذلك ابن القيم, he says in his kitab, الصواعق المرسلة, the fourth volume, page 1564, number 67. He says, إذا تأملها صحيح المتأمل والنظر والنظر وجدها مؤسسة على غاية الحكمة ابن تيمية ابن القيم says if a person who is healthy observes this samawat and this universe he observes it he comes to realize and he comes to know that the one who brought it into existence he brought it all into existence based on a wisdom a complete wisdom مُغَشَّاتًا بِالْحِكْمَةِ It's covered with wisdom. فَقَرَأَ سُطُورَ الْحِكْمَةِ عَلَى صَفَحَاتِهَا It is written on, on it, the wisdom that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, Him having to bring this universe and everything into, into being by wisdom, it's all written on it. وَيُنَادِي عَلَيْهَا هَذَا الصُّنْعَ الْعَلِيمِ Al-Hakim wa taqdeerul aziz al-alim. Even the creation screams out, tells you the loudest voice there is that Allah wa Taala brought it into existence with wisdom. Ridalika, two men had a conversation once, and they discussed amongst themselves. They said, "If only Allah wa Taala, one was a believer." And one was an atheist. The atheist said to the believer, if only God, you, you believe, was to write on the sky clearly and to say to the people, here I am, I'm, I exist. I am not what these atheists are saying about me. I exist and here I am. I am writing it on the sky. It would have saved a lot of headache, he said. Then the believer said, what language would you want him to write it in? Because not everybody understands the, the language that's going to be used. So the atheists went quiet. The believers said, Allah wrote it in a language which everybody would understand. He said, where is it? He said, your fitrah. 
في الفطرة is Allah تبارك وتعالى engraving in you carving in your heart and mind that he is the one سبحانه وتعالى who brought everything into existence that is something everyone knows then the author says عليم Allah is knowledgeable he created all of this not just with wisdom but with knowledge as he said in the Quran ألا يعلم من خلق وهو اللطيف الخبير does he not know the one who created? Allah also says, Subhanahu wa Taala, Allahu alladhi khalaq al-sama sab'a samawatin wa min al-ard mithlahun yatanzal al-amr bainahun li ta'lamu an Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir wa an Allah qad ahata bi kulli shay'in ilma. So Allah created the what? The sab'a samawat. Wa min al-ard Allah created this unit, this earth. And Allah's command keeps descending down to it. Why? لتعلموا. So you all can know. Know what? لتعلموا أن الله على كل شيء قدير That Allah has ability over everything. وأن الله قد أحاط بكل شيء علما And that Allah encompassed knowledge over everything. Then the author says واحد متفرد Allah is alone. Because if Allah تبارك وتعالى was more than one then this creation would not, would not have come into existence. The one who can bring it into existence is only one. ولذلك, that's why the author said, واحد متفرد. He is alone in his creating. He is also alone in his sustaining. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah said in the Quran, هَلْ مِنْ خَالِقٍ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ يَرْزُقُكُمْ Is there any... Is there a creator other than Allah who provides for you? The answer to that question is no. So because Allah wa ta'ala is the only one who creates and he's the only one who sustains and he's the only one who controls this universe, then he is the only one who deserves to be obeyed. The only one who deserves to be worshipped, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that he is not associated with partners with this. The poet he said, as Ibn al-Qayyim brings, تأمل سطور الكائنات فإنها من الملأ الأعلى إليك رسائل. He said, look and observe. The poet. Look at سطور الكائنات. Look at the things that are created around you and observe it. فإنها for verily it is من الملأ الأعلى from the one high above. إليك رسائل. Messages are being sent to you through it. وَقَدْ خَطَّ فِيهَا لَوْ تَأَمَّلْتَ خَطَّهَا Writings have been carved in it for you, if only you can read from it. أَلَا كُلُّ شَيْءٍ Verily everything مَا خَلَى اللَّهُ That is other than Allah is بَاطِلٌ It's going to come to an end. It's not going to live forever. نعم. بَلَا وَالَّذِي بِالْحَقِّ أَتْقَنَ سُنْعَهَا Indeed so, I swear by the one who truly perfected them and placed within them subtle signs which for Allah testify. The author now says Bala. This Bala is the response to the answer which he, question sorry, that he asked which is Alaysa. He used the word Alaysa, right? So he's now responding to it by saying bala. So the word bala is a jawabun. Yati aqib al nafi al ithbatil manfiyi. So he's trying to say bala, of course. Inna li hadha al khalqi muhdithu al mutasarrifu hakiman, aliman, wahidan, mutafarrida. That's what he's trying to say. But he's trying to say that, of course, of course, the word bala is more stronger than the word na'am. Na'am means yes. Whereas bala means what? It means, of course. So the author here is saying, Bala, of course. That these creations that we're seeing right now, of course, there's one who brought it into existence. And there's one who controls its affairs. That one who does it is wise. In what he does it, he done it sorry, with wisdom and knowledge. And he's alone in it. Of course, he's trying to say. 
But the author, rahimahullah ta'ala, he swore by Allah to strengthen the meaning and to drive the point home. So he didn't just say bala, which is of course, he says bala wal I swear by the one. Bilhaqqi atqana sun'aha. Ma ma'ana, but I swear by the one. Wal bilhaqqi, the one of truth. Atqana the one who done who done it with perfection sunaha the making and the creating of all of this he done it with perfection then allah say in the quran ma tara fi khalqir rahman min tafawut farji' al basar hal tara min futur sah allah told us to look at the sama allah says hey do you see any cracks or ha huh? Do you see any rifts or on the sama? The answer is no, you don't. It is done with perfection. If you read into the concept of the fine tuning, you realize how Allah Taala has done it all with what perfection, Subhanahu wa Taala. All of that shows what tadullu ala azamati khaliqha wa kamali mubdiqha. All of that shows you. The supreme, great creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look what he says after that. الأسرار, Allah has placed inside those creations subtle secrets. Which all speak to you. But it will only be understood by beloved brothers and sisters, a person who has a heart. We always say, إِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارُ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ Naam, you can see the sama. Naam, you can see the sun and the moon. But you may not realize the messages because you're not blind from your, from your eyes, really. It's the heart that becomes blind, as Allah said. And look what Allah said in the Quran. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرَى لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمْعَ وَهُوَ شَهِيدٌ Allah said, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرَى Reminder lies in the Quran. But who does it lie in there for? Allah says, لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ A person who has a heart. Or a person who brings back, brings forward his ear, wants to really listen. Have you realized when people want to relate to somebody sometimes and they want to drive their point home, they say, Akhi, do you have a heart? Sah? When the person is really not getting the point and he's just not, he's being very harsh and hard. The first question they ask is, do you have a heart? Sah? This man, can see, you, you, you're sending the messages to him. He's hearing everything which you're saying. He can see the tragic that's happened. Ma'adhalik, he doesn't feel it. So you ask him, do you have a heart? Why don't you ask him, do you have an ear to hear with? Do you have an eye to see? It's because all of that won't be of any value or any importance if the person doesn't have a, if he doesn't have a heart. So all of those signs Allah has placed and those subtle secrets that Allah has placed in the sama, you won't truly understand them if you don't have a heart. And that's why the poet said, فَوَاعَجَبًا كَيْفَ يُعْصَ الْإِلَاهُ Amazement, the fascination is, how can one disobey Allah? أَمْ كَيْفَ يَجْحَدُهُ الْجَاحِدُ Or how can the stubborn one reject? وَلِلَّهِ فِي كُلِّ تَحْرِيكَةٍ وَفِي Every movement there is in this world, in it is what? كُلِّ تَسْكِينَةٍ Every tranquility and still, there is a sign in it. وَفِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ لَهُ آيَةٍ and everything has a sign in it that indicates Allah is alone. But again, as I said, it can only be seen by who? لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمْعَ وَهُوَ شَهِيدٌ نعم. وَفِي الْأَرْضِ آيَاتٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ مُوْقِنًا وَمَا تَنْفَعُ الْآيَاتُ مَنْ كَانَ يَجْحَدُ And in the earth are signs for anyone who has certainty, but the signs are of no use to one who remains in stubborn denial. So the author says, وَفِي الْأَرْضِ And on this earth, there are signs. لِمَنْ كَانَ مُوْقِنَا This author is taken from this, the ayah. وَفِي الْأَرْضِ آيَاتٌ لِلْمُوْقِنِينَ In the earth, there are signs for who lacking? The one who has certainty. 
The ayat here are baraheen and hujaj, proofs and evidences. All of them which indicate what? That Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is alone. Not that he only exists. He's alone in all of this. ولذلك ابن كثير رحمه الله سبحانه كيم تدي آية وفي الأرض آيات للموكنين ابن كثير said in the تفسير of this آية أي فيها من الآيات الدالة على عظمة خالقها وقدرته الباهرة مما قد درع فيها من صنوف النبات والحيوانات والمهاد والجبال والقفار والأنهار والبحار he says وفي الأرض آيات للموكنين means أي in it is he says فيها من الآيات الدالة Signs that indicate ala azamati khaliqiha the greatness, majestic, that the creator of it is. Wa qudratihi al-bahira. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's mind-boggling ability. Mimma qad jara'a fiha which sprung from it. Min sunufi al-nabatat. Min sunufi al-nabat. Different types of crops, flowers, والحيوانات animals, والمهاد والجبال the earth, mountains different types of mountains, والقفار والأنهار والبحار rivers, lakes, seas, ponds, lake all of them. They are all different. There's a water you see. It's sweet, salty. Another one is drinkable. You can drink it. Another one you can't. Bell, there's a sea. Maraj al Bahraini al Taqiyan. Bainahuma barzahul la yabghiyan. Allah says, Maraj al Bahrain, two Bahar come together. هذا عذب فرات وهذا ملح أجاج. But what did Allah place between between it? بينهما برزخ وحجر. They are Allah has placed between it what? A wall. They're not mixing with each other. Two waters are mixing with each other. بالله عليكم. Go to YouTube watch it. They don't mix. Who's holding it? What forces? are holding two waters of two different flavors. And subhanAllah, if you look at it, they look different colors. One looks blue and one looks green. You can tell it's salty water. Have you seen it? Ayyeh. Muhammad al-Amin al-Shaqiqi talks about it when he saw it. He went and he saw it. Alayhi rahmatullah. But as the author said, that all of these signs are only beneficial for the one who has certainty. Anyone who doesn't, doesn't have any benefit from it. وفي الأرض آيات للموقنين for the one who has certainty. وما then the author goes on to say وما تنفع الآيات من كان يجحدو. These verses are not going to benefit the one who is in stubborn denial. There are some people if the sun is out, they want to put their hand over it and say it's dark. There's really nothing to say to a person like that who's reached that that level of stubbornness and denial. The people have become so stubborn and, and, and in denial that they want to make a discussion and a debate about whether you exist. So he wants to make a dialogue, a discussion. He calls it a fruitful discussion if you're existing. People like that, we can, what you can really say about them is that that they are just in stubborn denial. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Quran, انظروا, Allah says to us, Look. ماذا في السماوات والأرض? Look at what's in the sama and what's in the earth. Look. And then look what Allah says that. Uh, after that. He says, وَمَا تُغْنِي الْآيَاتُ Allah says, these verses do not suffice. They don't, they're not, they don't bring contentment to. وَنُذُرُ عَنْ قَوْمِ اللَّهِ يُؤْمِنُونَ People who don't believe. And people who are stubborn and hard-headed, who've made their minds up before, they've got to this conclusion way before. They have a preconceived notion. 
which is settled in their hearts and mind. However much you try to convince them. Ibn Kathir, when it came to this ayah, مَاذَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا تُغْنِي الْآيَاتُ وَالنُّذُرُ عَنْ قَوْمِ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ He says, أي وأي شيء تجدى أما تجدى الآيات السماوية والأرضية والرسل بآياتها وحججها وبراهينها الدالة على صدقها عن قوم لا يؤمنون. He says that these signs, which is the سماوات and the earth, in which Allah سبحانه وتعالى brought about, and the proofs that the messengers have come with, and their evidences. Which all indicate the truthfulness of theirs. The Samawat and the Ard. And then the Ayat al Matluwa, which we mentioned, the proofs and the message that they came with, all go hand in hand and they prove that this Prophet is truthful. But he said, all of that will not benefit and go a people who won't believe. Allah already told us this. The author's speech is finished. He's, Allah already told us something. What did he say? Even if you come to them. If you come to them with every verse there is and every sign there is and every proof there is, Allah tells us subhanahu wa ta'ala they are not going to believe. Even if every ayah comes to them, every proof comes to them, until they see the hellfire. Also, Allah says in another ayah, وَكَأَيٍّ مِّنْ آيَةٍ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَمُرُّونَ عَلَيْهَا وَهُمْ عَنْهَا مُعْرِضُونَ Allah says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, how many? Allah is saying, look, وَكَأَيِّمْ مِنْ آيَةٍ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ How many verses are in the Samawat? And there are signs that are in the earth. How many signs that are in the Samawat? And how many signs are in the earth? Allah says, يَمُرُّونَ عَلَيْهَا They go over those verses. And those signs, they go over it. They see it, but they turn it. وَهُمْ عَنْهَا مُعْرِضُونَ And they turn a blind eye to it. They turn away from it. They reject it. They're heedless of it. So what we know is, وَإِنْ كَثُرَتْ وَتَعَدَّدَتْ Even if it comes in large quantity and large amount, the proofs, and time goes by, those people are not going to believe. So a lot of the time people busy themselves with atheists. These people are in stubborn denial. وفي نفس وفي نفس آيات وفي النفس آيات وفيها عجائب بها يعرف الله العظيم ويعبد. In the human are signs and astonishing features by which Allah the Most Majestic is known and solely worshipped. The author now says, وَفِي nafsi ayatun." In the person, in each and every one of us, there are signs as well. You yourself, you have signs in you. Nafsul Bashariya, the human body, the human being, has ayat, azimah, great signs in him. As Allah said, وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ And there are signs in you. Do you not see them? Allah is asking you, do you not see the signs that I have placed in you? Allah has placed in us subtle secrets, messages within us. All of that which shows what? That shows what? The complete ability, the complete strength of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that he is alone and he is the one who deserves to be worshipped. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَفِيهَا عَجَائِبٌ The author then says, and there are amazements in it. There are signs يَتَعَجَّبُ مِنْ حُسْنِهَا وَجَمَالِهَا Signs that a person will become amazed with, mind-boggled, taken back. 
all of it shows what Kamalu Itqaniha, how Allah perfected all of this. Allah made a black person, another white one, another one who's not dark, not black in between, another one this color, one whose hair is blonde, one whose hair is white, one whose hair is black, one whose hair is this, one who's extremely tall, one who's short, one who is, uh, what do you call it, his eyes are small, one whose eyes are big, one whose nose is small, one whose nose is poking, one whose nose is flat. All of that Allah created it. All of that from Nabiullah Adam. There are signs and all of that. Amazement. How Allah wa ta'ala made everyone adaptable to the environment. People who live in Africa, Allah made their skins and their body and their facial expression and their facial. Allah made it in a particular way. The body starts to adapt to that environment. The people who live in Asia, the people who live in Europe, the people who are different. So Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala wa fi anfusikum afala tubsirun. There are amazing signs that are in where Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has brought us about and has created us. Biha through these verses and these signs. يُعْرَفُوا Allah Allah is known. When a person looks at himself and observes himself, that this body that you can see today that can move like this, there is just one thing that if it leaves, this body can't do anything anymore. It's a soul. Ajeeb. Have you not seen somebody, a very co- a cousin of yours or a nephew or a niece or something? You haven't seen them for a very long time. And then you see them after a while. Bam, the person is changed, grown, big, facial, face, hair's come out now. The voice has become a bit deep now, the boy. And you left when he was a kid, a toddler. All of this, who is doing it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Signs that make you... Am- that age that you see has entered into that toddler. What you don't really realize is time. He's grown fast like that. Time wasn't standing. It really is time that's in you as well. Hassan al-Basri said, إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ أَيَّامٍ You are only just a component of time. That's what you really are. You look at your children, man. If you really are close to your children and you're very uh, aware of their situation, you will learn every day when they pick up a new word. How they, how they learn. You're saying to yourself, I haven't taught you this. How is, are you... Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. There are theories when it comes to linguistics, when it, com- uh, when it comes to uh, la- the acquisitions of language. And they mention that language, there's many theories. One of the theories that are out there are called the behavioralism, the behavioral theory, which is pushed by Noam Chomsky and others, which basically says that language is an innate ability. Allah has placed it in us. Every single body picks up language acquires language, acquires language. He doesn't learn language, he acquires it. He gains it without him having to. It just needs to be ignited. It just needs to be switched on. But pay attention to this. That's the speaking of language. And you now look at a parrot. Wallahi, this is one of the classes that fascinated me the most. You go to a parrot. The parrot cannot initiate a language. It can only say what was told to it. And subhanAllah, they looked at the mouth of a monkey and a chimpanzee and they realized that the way that the mouth is carved it can't produce sounds and voices through his mouth paths and and through the amazing is that you can speak my children i don't know when they learn how to speak it's just i saw them talking but they can't write now they have to be taught how to write and how to read. Look at the one who chose to give you the ability to speak. But then when it comes to reading and writing, you have to put more effort in there. The reading and the writing becomes learning and not acquiring. All of this is fi anfusikum afala tubsirun. Signs, wallah. That alone, the fact that you have the ability to speak language shows you who placed that in me, who put that in me. Who has placed that in me? 
And the argument that says it's innate, put in place that a God and a creator and a sustainer and a provider exists, then he deserves to be worshipped alone. وَفِيهَا عَجَائِبٌ بِهَا Through those signs يُعْرَفُ اللَّهُ وَيُعْبَدُ And he deserves to be worshipped. That's what Allah said in the Quran. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ Why did he use the word خَلَقْتُ? I created you. And then look what he says after that. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Because Allah created you. He's the one who deserves to be worshipped alone. He's alone in creating you. He's alone in sustaining you. In the same surah, Allah shows you against sustenance. Look what he says. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْبَتِينِ I don't need provision from you. I don't need you to provide for me. I will provide for you guys. To show you that providing which is sustenance and running your affairs and also creating you both is done by Allah alone, alone, alone. Then he is the one who deserves to be worshipped alone and not to be associated partners with him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam.